birria style tacos on the griddle. We started off by smoking the beef, then we braised that beef all day. We added that shredded cheese, and we just got done griddling them, making those shells all crunchy. If you guys want to see how we make these, watch this. All right, to get started, I guess asked all the time when I mentioned this about my Texas rub. I call it my Texas rub. I don't know what else to call it. It's just my all-purpose, kind of like barbecue-style generic rub. It just gets me to point A to point B very fast. You can check that recipe out on Pelts and Pits, okay? Not the Flat Top King, but Pelts and Pits, because that's where I do a lot of smoking. So really quickly, this is what the mix looks like. One part seasoned salt, one part diamond crystal kosher salt, one part garlic, granulated garlic, and then two parts coarse black pepper. Just give that a mix. Then I'll just have a little funnel and then that goes in there. This is my sample bottle when we were trying our barbecue seasoning. This is kind of like the samples that we would get in the mail. So a little tit for tat. All right, let's get our meat seasoned up. To get started, when talking about birria, it really comes down to one or two things. I'm not using lamb or goat, I'm going the beef route. And also, if you can find me two recipes that are the same, then I'll try to make that one. We have made birria in the past. We've made a cheap version and we made the real version. When I made the real version, <clears throat> I felt like it was incredible. It was really, really good, but that was the only true style that I've ever made. So it's hard to compare it. Now that a year has passed, we've had it at restaurants, we've had it at a friend's house. We understand like the, the idea of peppers. We understand the idea of flavors. And I think where I can make mine better is more of a consomme style uh, product. Mine had a little bit more tomato in it. And looking back, I think we can make this better. So these are the meat choices that I have. We have a truck roast, which is when you go the beef route is kind of standard. In our last video, we used short ribs. Um, I was going to use a leg of lamb, but I opted for this. I found this, um, I was actually looking through Costco and saw them. And then when we were at Kroger's, I saw the short ribs and they actually had oxtail. The whole point of adding lamb or goat, one, because it's more regional, it's more traditional, but two is because of the, the fats that are in the meat, the gelatin and all that stuff. It gives it like a really deep style flavor. The fat floats, which is when you dip your tortilla, that helps. With the addition of oxtails, I think we can get there close, okay? The beef short ribs, full of fat. The chuck roast, as you can see, is not near as fatty as these two. So this is gonna be basically uh, beef, and this will have beef, but it has a lot of fat and flavor. And then the start of the show, I think, we just smoked a prime rib for a Pellets and Pitch channel for a Christmas holiday special. And these are smoked bone-in prime rib bones that we saved just for this video, okay? That prime rib, by the way, was the best prime rib you've ever made. I think it's like most things, you know, you start, you start really really diving deep and understand the concepts and why and why and why and when you make a really good one it's hard to go back and the last time we made it it was a good one all right all i'm gonna do is take this out of the package and season it up with our texas rub smoke all these uh, pieces of meat for about two hours. I'm not looking for uh, temperature inside of it. It's more for color and flavor. We're gonna be rocking the um, Lone Star Grill today. Uh, maybe 255, I might even turn it to 260, something like that, just so I can. But uh, we're looking for about two hours and after that, we'll start adding everything together. Oh, look at that color. Look at that color. So we've been on there for about two and a half hours. Got my griddle heated up. I'm going to throw some smoked beef tallow down. 
because now I'm going to sear that chuck roast off to get a little more depth of color. And we're going to throw some onions down, maybe even some carrots. Just all about flavor. If you're watching this video and you're thinking, I don't have a smoker, I don't want to do this recipe, you can skip the smoking stage. You can sear this off um, inside. You can use your griddle to sear off large pieces of meat or more meat at one time. So don't be timid by the smoker. I just think it imparts incredible flavor. So we're just gonna sear this back and forth. Some of that beef tallow, char some onions. Can you throw it into your pot raw? Absolutely. I'm just trying to impart a little bit more depth of flavor. We're gonna sear our chuck roast off. Try to get some good contact. See the color we're getting with our onions? See that color? Every time you do this, you're just imparting more and more flavor. That's what I'm looking for is just flavor. All right, let's talk about our peppers really quick. I've saved one just to show you. Um, let's do it like this. I'm looking to get some color on these peppers. They're supposed to lighten up when they toast. It just releases some of the flavors. There's our spicy ones. So while that's going, let me show you this really quick. You just wanna open your peppers up, get all the seeds out. Remember it's gonna be blended so it doesn't matter how great it looks. Okay. Stems off, seeds out. Just toasting these up. So let's talk about our peppers really quick. I have mentioned before that I have a hard enough time speaking the English language, much less another language. So I've been told, thank you for not butchering it. And I've also been told you're a wimp. You should at least try it. So here we go. Okay. Whatever you want me to do, whatever. Pasila, Pasila Negro. Okay. I'm using three of those. Guajillo, Guajillo, Guajillo. I'm using eight of those. Orable. <laughs> or ball or orable. I'm using, orable. I'm using uh, four of those, okay? I know, this is what I do know, okay? In my Appalachian style country cooking. This is for spice. This is for flavor. And this gives you like a, a deep, like raisiny medium note. That's all I know. I just know that I've cooked it several times. I'm getting better and better each try, so that's why we're doing it today. All right. So to get caught back up, this is where we're at. We've got our blistered style onions with plenty of flavor on there. We even put the carrots on there. We seared that chuck roast off. We have toasted our peppers. We have all of our beef from the smoker right here. So from here, it's basically just everything goes in the pot, okay? Our prime rib bones, our oxtails, our vegetables, our peppers. Do you know what size pot that is? Because we've got to have a large pot. Well, not without looking. Eight quart. All right, to our pot, it's basically the dump method. Cinnamon, coriander, and ginger. Cumin, apple cider vinegar, chili powder, some bay leaves, Mexican oregano, one head of garlic, crushed, we have three big tomatoes that's just been cut up. Leftover au jus from the uh, prime rib. You can substitute beef stock, beef broth. Some Mexican beer. 
I'm looking for about 12 ounces. Save some for me. So don't waste any of that flavor. I had four cups of water, so we're gonna see how much we use. You're basically looking to bring the water up to the beef. On the stove, this goes for several hours while everything breaks down, creates its sauce, simmers in its own broth. We'll show you what it looks like. All right, our beef is simmered away nicely. So we got some prep work to do. I have some limes, a white onion. I found during my research that white onion was key, not necessarily the sweet Valdelia onion that we're used to. And I have cilantro. Whether this is separate or you mix it together, it didn't seem like it mattered. I'm gonna mix it together because me and the wife both like it together. When it came to the cheese, to be honest with you, this is where my culinary journey ended. I didn't want to be disrespectful, so I didn't know which one to get. I tried to look it up and it just seemed like it was more common where sometimes people use mozzarella and substitute of, and sometimes people would use this one. Okwaka, Oxwaka. I told you I tried to pronounce it, whether I do or not, I'm just trying to be respectful. Oxica, I don't know. <clears throat> I know I can say this one. This is quesadilla. So when I looked at it, you know, I just didn't know which one to get. So I'm going to use both. So cuss me if you will, but that's what I'm doing. We tried them. Oh, might as well. That's the only way you're ever going to know which one you like better. So this is what we're doing. That tastes like string cheese. <laughs> so does mom. <laughs> but this is creamier, way creamier. It is different cheese. Mm. I like this one better. The quesadilla one? Yeah. Yeah, I agree. Quesadilla one's better. I hope this don't throw the recipe for a loop. <laughs> I just choose this one. Don't. I'm just telling you. Head to head, I like this better, so this is what I'm going to use. Ooh, that quesadilla cheese is good. <laughs> I'm say what? That's, that's, right. worth a, that's worth a cracker. <laughs> I don't recommend a lot of things. Jeez. But that's I recommend good. that one. That makes me want to make another quesadilla. So I'm going to estimate makes it basically just, you know, eyeballing 50-50. And there is the star of the show. So what we're going to do now is to create basically two to three piles. I'm going to create a pile of good meat and a pile of bones that are just going to be discarded and then a pile to blend. We have had this on the stove for about, that's an oxtail, so we need to pick that, for about two and a half hours. And depending on how, what kind of ratio you have and how much meat you have and all that, that, there's a lot of variables that go into that. Remember, your whole goal is to basically to um, create a fork tender beef. So however you get there is however you get there. All right, we have our blender full of goodies, the garlic, the carrot, the onion. We've taken out the bay leaf. We've got all those peppers in there. We've got that nice rich broth consomme. I'm gonna add some of it to here to help blend. Successful blend compared to sometimes. <clears throat> Man, that stuff just smells so earthy, so rich. It's like the perfect time of year for it too, just for the simple fact of how cozy it smells, if that's a word. All right, we got it in the sieve. We're just going to strain this right back in that consomme. Not bad if I do say so myself. That's not bad. And that right there is what you should be left with. I don't know if you can see how silky smooth that is how it holds on to the back of the spatula. Golly. 
All right, we basically have three uh, piles right here. We have good meat, we have meat with bones, and we have just scraps, okay? But your good meat, not all your good meat is good meat. You're gonna have to pick through it and get a lot of that fat from the um, short rib and stuff like that off of there. It's it's you just it's not an edible thing. So just pick through the meat. I'm gonna make a pile over here because I don't want to add all this back to the sauce. I'm not exactly sure how much sauce I'll need. So I'd rather save the sauce at the end and incorporate it back in as I need it. See, all that right there is just basically short rib fat. All righty, we have shredded our meat. We've incorporated it back to the sauce. I've held some sauce back for our consomme. And I've just put it back on the griddle. And while the griddle's heating up, just slowly added everything together. And this is what we got. Just a beautiful concoction of all those spices blended together with the, with the uh, herbs and vegetables. Mixing them with that beef. You guys can see what it looks like now. Golly, just to be honest with you, we just made one off camera. Just make sure I've got all my ducks in a row. Fantastic. Full alert. Fantastic. I will say this. I really want to make homemade cordon tortillas. I've done it in the past when we did Al Pastor. But in this video, I was kind of nervous. It's not like I'm the world's greatest tortilla maker. So I did go the store-bought route <clears throat> just in case. And then when everything got done, I was like, you know, I just don't want to sit here and take the time and effort to make homemade just to ruin the dish. So I'm with the safe route. If you want to make your homemade, make your homemade. I'm glad you're doing it. Also, I know this is embarrassing, <clears throat> but this is the truth. I don't necessarily like mine dipped. I'm going to show you two different versions. I'm going to show you a dip version and the way that I like to do it. See, I like my meat all mixed in with the stew. Okay. So the first thing I'm going to do. <clears throat> that pepper stuck in your throat, honey. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> The first thing I'm gonna do is just add a little tallow to the griddle as my oil source, okay? I know what you're thinking, you dip it in there, it's got oil in it, but trust me, I like it. We're going to just gently warm up these tortillas. We're gonna just do, let's just say four. While they're heating up, we're gonna add that mix of the cheeses. This one right here we can dip. I still want it pliable though. Since it's so cold outside, you got to remember it's what 34, 35 degrees outside, so the tortillas are hard as a rock. This one, just dip it in that grease that's floating to the top, put it right there. The hardest thing you can do is refrain from overstuffing. I know it sounds crazy, but don't get carried away. There's so much flavor in these, a little goes a long ways. Golly. We told each other off camera that we like this way better than we did the first batch. I think I just added a little bit more aroma, the cinnamon, the ginger. It just, it's just got a whole different vibe to it. So I think one of the biggest differences is <clears throat> My beef has that stew sauce all in the middle or all incorporated in it, which aids in the taco having that classic texture that you're thinking of when you bite into it. But I prefer the crispier crunch on the outside and then I'll dip it in the consomme, okay? That's the difference. Maybe somebody will say, hey, if you did the beer right the first time, then you know maybe you wouldn't have to do that. But I'm just telling you what I like. So this is the dip version. And these are the undipped. At this point, if you wanted to, you could come back and spoon some of that sauce over top of it. This is all about personal preference. I'm not saying that's right or wrong. I'm just saying that's what we enjoy. That little cheese around the edge is absolute liquid gold. I 
I'll just flip them back over one more time just to crisp up that other edge. So this is the dipped one, and these are the undipped. I got one more way to show you. Warm up the tortillas. Now look what I got right here. I got the strainer and I've been straining some beef off to the side. You can see it's still warm. Okay. Take that tortilla, hit in that sauce. with some of that cheese. I like the cheese a lot, so I go heavy on my cheese. I think that's what makes it. And then come back with that beef like that. And it just goes to show you there's more than one way to cook something. You know, you don't have to stay 100% guaranteed on anything, you know, just make it the way you like it. You spend all this time and all this effort and that's kind of what I preach on a consistent base that regardless of what I make, just make it into your own. If you don't like something, omit it. If you like something more, add more of it. That dang cheese is so good. I just took a tortilla, put some of that smoked beef tallow down, and now I'm just gonna make a cheese quesadilla with a corn tortilla. <laughs> All right, so these are the four original, the dipped and then the crunchy style. So what I'm gonna do, all of them are gonna get dressed the same. Oh yeah. Cilantro onion mix. Squeeze a lime. Alrighty, we have the three undipped, we have the original dipped, and this one right here is the dipped with the drier meat. So that's the one that my wife wanted. So I'm gonna go to the crunchy side first, because that's the one that I wanted. You get that crunchy shell, then you can dip in your consomme. And we just keep adding them to the pile. <laughs> Those are two dry ones that are undipped for the kids. They seem to like it, and that's how you know it's good. Uh, to me, it's warm, it's cozy, it's cold outside, and I think it's a perfect time to do it where you use most of your cooking indoors, and then you can utilize your griddle right at the very end. Make a bunch of these in a hurry. Do you want to taste these on camera? Or you going to go inside and eat them? I know, they're fantastic. Uh, yeah, we had We've one already had some. <laughs> and that cheese quesadilla that you don't see around here anywhere has already been eaten. That thing was fantastic. That cheese is good. That cheese is good. That cheese and is good. And these tacos are good they're super messy <laughs> oh, i think it's a step above what i made last time i think you could taste the you could taste the deeper flavor it's more of a rich it's got the fat in it it's got just a depth of flavor that you you're not going to get anywhere else and i think just mixing those combination of meats help that as well uh if you guys are interested we have a join button down below it's a membership program and we thank each and every one of you for taking time for doing so you can check us out on the griddle group on facebook where we talk about griddle smokers outdoor cooking the holidays are here We've been talking about a lot of things lately, so if you haven't jumped on that quick, thanks for watching. Don't forget to press that subscribe button, pound the notification button, share it with your friends. Mm. Yeah, these are good. They're super good. Yeah, honey. I'm going for that crunchy bite before it gets That's too cold. That's a kid's. Ah, That's a kid's. I'll have to make another one. There's your dry one. Oh, give me that one. Look how cold it is. The dang Sauce. fat inside the <laughs> consomme is seasoned hey, up. Hey, hey, what are hey, you doing? That's my bite. Mm. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs>